Distinguished members of the Standing Committee of Finance under the auspices of UNFCCC, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the opportunity to address this really important forum. Its focus on climate finance and sustainable cities could not be timelier. First, because we are in a climate emergency. The science has never been clearer or more alarming. We must take immediate action to limit global temperature rise to as close as possible to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels or face unfathomable catastrophe. And second, because cities, while they are both key drivers of climate change and victims of its impact, are also often key innovators and drivers of climate action. For example, Cape Town has committed to building only carbon neutral buildings by 2030 and to be fully climate neutral by 2050. Buenos Aires is planting 54,000 trees by 2023 and is working to provide better housing for the inhabitants of informal settlements facing heightened flood risk. Taipei is saving 600,000 tons of water per year by fixing water leaks. And New York is working to divest its $189 billion pension fund of about $5 billion of investments in fossil fuel companies, the beginnings of what we hope will be complete divestment there and in cities across the world. These efforts show that change is possible and that cities can be important partners in achieving a more climate-friendly nature. But adequate finance is crucial to achieving both our climate and sustainable development goals. Studies show that under a low-carbon scenario, $93 trillion will be needed to be invested in infrastructure globally by 2030. 70% of this will be in urban areas. Current spending stands at half the amount required for a sustainable future. We need to fill this financing gap, and I'm pleased that this forum will discuss the role of climate finance in doing so. I would like to outline four key points for you to consider. First, governments need to take the lead in unlocking finance for cities. They need to think long-term, beyond electoral cycles. Second, capacity building support for cities needs to be ratcheted up, both in the public and the private spheres. Third, the private sector needs to be more engaged in urban climate action, from big companies to micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises. And fourth, the process of building sustainable cities must become more inclusive and participatory, especially for the most vulnerable. I'm encouraged that your forum is attended by a broad variety of participants, from government, city-level authorities, international financial institutions, multilateral climate funds, think tanks, academia, and civil society. We at the United Nations look forward to working with all of you to accelerate action on the ground. In that spirit, I wish you all a really fruitful and productive meeting. Thank you for your commitment and your support.